Two pitchers, the same ERA. One is dominating, striking guys out, limiting hard contact. The other is getting bailed out by defense and luck. So how can these numbers look identical when the performances are clearly not? That's where expected ERA comes in. A stat that looks beyond the box score to tell you what a pitcher should have allowed. Today, we're breaking down what XERA is, how it's calculated, and why it's one of the best tools for spotting breakouts and busts on the mound all before they happen. Let's start with the problem with ERA. ERA, as many of you know, stands for Earned Run Average, and it has been the go-to pitching stat for over a century. But here's the thing. ERA doesn't care about how those runs scored, just the fact that they did. Did your shortstop fall short of reaching what would have been an easy double play ball? Did the wind play a factor in an outfield not getting to a sure flyout? Or did your outfielder make a spectacular diving catch to save two runs? ERA does not know. And that has been the spark for analysts everywhere attempting to find new ways to evaluate how good a pitcher actually is. Because ERA relies heavily on the environment a pitcher throws in and the defensive abilities behind him. So while ERA tries to tell us what has happened, it doesn't tell us how well a pitcher actually performed. For that, we need something a little bit smarter. Which brings us to the topic of today's video, expected ERA, which is short for expected earn run average. It's a stat cast metric that answers one simple question. Based on how hard and how well the ball was hit, what should have happened? Every time a batter puts a ball in play, StatCast measures the exit velocity and the launch angle. From that, we get an expected outcome. A double, a ground out, a home run. And because we've been tracking all of that information for decades now, we have a pretty large database to determine what the estimated outcome of a batted ball with similar metrics should result in. Then you add in walks and hit by pitches, and you're covering all of the anticipated results that can occur in result to every plate appearance. Now this may sound familiar if you've watched our video on XWOBA. Check that video out here if you haven't already. But it should sound familiar. The reason for that? Because XERA is simply a pitcher's XWOBA against put to the ERA scale. One thing to note, anytime you see a lowercase x in front of a stat that you are familiar with, just know that you're looking at an expected stat calculated the same way we just discussed. By putting XWOBA on the ERA scale, that makes this stat very easy to understand, as most casual baseball fans are quite familiar with what a good and a bad ERA is. So, while there's a lot going on under the hood here, the output remains simple and easy to interpret for any fan. XERA is not guessing. It's using millions of batted ball outcomes to predict what should have happened based on the contact quality allowed by the pitcher. Now that we understand how this stat is calculated, let's dive into how you can actually apply it. But before we do, make sure you go and check out the Simple Sabermetrics shop today to snag one of these fresh new lids. We've got two new styles now to show off that you're all about data-driven baseball. You can head to the link at the top of the description or the shop tab on the channel today to get yours. Here's a quick look at how you can use this stat in action using two examples from pitchers during the 2025 season. Pitcher A sported a 2.96 ERA, but a 4.07 XERA. This pitcher saw good results, but his XERA tells us that his contact quality allowed should have shown worse results over the course of the season. This tells us his defense may have been bailing him out, and he may be due for regression in the future. Pitcher B had a solid 3.2 ERA, but a 2.18 expected ERA. So on the flip side, this individual pitched to a 3-2. That's nothing to laugh about in today's game, but his expected ERA tells us we anticipated him to have an even better year than he did. In this case, you would expect this pitcher to have an even better year next year solely looking at these two statistics. Pitcher A was Cam Schlittler, who had a really solid year all in all. But the expected stats tell us to be weary of him reproducing this level of production next season. And pitcher B was Brandon Woodruff, who also had a solid year. But the expected stats tell us that he had the potential to have an even better season than he did. So what does expected ERA tell us? If you're just reading ERA, you're missing the real story. Expected ERA helps us paint a better picture of not just the results that a pitcher saw on the bump this year by taking a look at the way that hitters were expected to fare against him. So that is how it's used for the casual fan. But how can front offices also use this stuff? 
Stats like expected ERA help front offices predict future performance, identify undervalued arms, and avoid spending big on the smoke and mirrors type pitchers. Teams aren't looking to buy past results when they hand out these massive contracts. What they're looking to do is invest in future value. A solid resume certainly helps determine more certainty, but the undervalued player who is about to break out is a much better use of a team's funds than a veteran player whose results have been declining for a handful of years now. XERA won't be the singular deciding factor for front offices, but the ideas behind it are. What can we look at in order to gain an edge on our opponents? It's the whole idea behind Moneyball. What information can we use to get ahead of the market? Expected stats on both sides of the ball help write that narrative. So what did we learn today? ERA tells you the result. And it's slightly swayed. It's heavily rooted in the park that a pitcher throws in and the defense behind it. XERA tells you the process. It removes the randomness and it gives you a clear read on how a pitcher is actually performing. It doesn't mean ERA is completely useless, but if you want to know what's real, you're going to need to look at something else, such as expected ERA. If this helped clear up how expected ERA works, I've got more videos on FIP, Sierra, and other underrated pitching stats. Check them out in the links below or on the end screen now. And hey, if you want to support smarter baseball content, make sure you grab a Simple Sabermetrics hat. Every purchase goes right back into helping bring you more educational baseball analytics videos just like this one. As always, I truly appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next week right back here on Simple Sabermetrics.